Okay, the video sync generator provides a sync for this entire system and it takes its sync either internally or from an external signal, in this case from the MX50. The external signal is available as a luminance output and we could send that output to the red channel of the video sync generator. Um, there's, and then if you unsync that, you get the signal floating across the screen. So the video sync generator also has built-in color bars. Here's the red channel. The green channel. And then the blue channel. And then the inputs, those red, green, blue inputs have attenuverters on them at fully clockwise. It's 100% for each signal. The 12 o'clock detent position, there's no signal pass through, and then you actually have an inverted function, so you could do strange color bar combinations. Finally, there's a red, green, and blue uh, post gain function for tinting your picture. This is like the uh, color mix function on the visual cortex. Uh, it looks pretty good. All right, so the color video encoder has three outputs. It has the S video, which is currently going to this monitor here. And then it has two RCA composite outs, one of which is going to a capture over here. So, uh, what else? The video sync generator, as I said, is sending sync to the whole system. It's sending sync to um, the clock VCO, Castle clock VCO, by the ribbon cables, sending it through those extra wires on the power cables. And that sends the the uh, vertical sync, which is labeled field here, to bus one of the ribbon cables, and the line sync, which is the H sync, to bus two. And, and so that this is working, let's take a look at the output of the clock VCO. Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and put it in here. So. So the clock VCO syncs with both the uh, vertical and the horizontal rates. And again, that's because it's taking it from here. Um, and then there's a sync cable, a 14 pin sync cable that goes out to the uh, cadet VCO, cadet nine. And so that is syncing. Uh, to both the horizontal and the vertical. Um, and then finally, we have <clears throat> the output of the video waveform generator. Currently, the video waveform generator, I unplugged uh, it from the same power bus. And so this is actually not synced in order to demonstrate that uh, also these outputs here are working. So these are horizontal going lines, therefore it's at video sync, sorry, vertical sync rate. So if I take the, the field out, those lines lock. 
And then if I take the line out, which is the H-Sync, and turn the range up, you can see that the uh, horizontal sync is also working coming out of here. There are two other outputs labeled odd and even, which I never use. Those are basically just syncing to um, the odd or even line. So if I go back down, it gives you a, a locked lines that sort of have an interlaced shimmer on them. Uh, okay, what else? The, oh yes, we were gonna look at the diver. So here's the diver. And let's go ahead and mirror that. So the diver likewise is locking to the sync provided by the video sync generator. In this case, the diver takes the RCA sync input on the back and I'm syncing it by taking the 14 pin output of the video sync generator and going to a reverse landfill uh, sync bus board, which then gives us a, an RCA out to loop to all the RCA modules. Hmm, I think that's about it, except to say that there's uh, one function that is not working on here, which is the uh, loop through that normals the input signals from the top down. So as you can see, we're still only seeing the red signal here. Um, so this is a common issue with the first generation uh, modules in the LZX Visionary series where the switching jacks uh, eventually stop uh, connecting the over the, the normal connections. Um, the way around that, if you want to get a black and white signal, is you just send the signal to a DA and a, mul a buffered multiple. And so you can get black and white. So let's see here. Whoops, sorry. So there's the red. <clears throat> Here's the green. So now we have yellow. And here's the blue. Now we have a black and white signal. The final thing I'll say is um, the picture is pretty darn good, but it's a little bit noisier than the output of the visual cortex. Um, I think the noise is more in the blue. Well, this looks pretty clean, actually. Sometimes you'll see a little bit more noise. I have asked LZX, uh, Chad and Nick, um, if they could improve that. And they said that the color video encoder is just simply a little more noisy than the later generation LZX modules. Um, hmm. I think that's all the functions. So, uh, Oh yeah, I guess I could show you that the RCA uh, outputs work. One of them is capturing. Let's take a look at the other one. Um, so here's the other RCA output. And can plug in the back here. Oh, I took out that. Hang on. Sorry, it's hard to do this with one hand. Okay, and we'll take out the. Ah, there. So, yeah, just to show you, the other RCA output is working as well, and it's equally uh, clean. Okay, that's the demonstration of the functions of the first generation LZX Visionary Core Modules.